So, thank you for coming on the Warrington Leeds tour. I will be your host for this afternoon, Josh Warrington. Obviously, having the nickname Leeds Warrior, I'm very proud of where I come from. You get a lot of honesty in people just saying that way is. Nobody likes us, and we like it that way. That's just Leeds people for you. What's my favourite thing about Leeds? Calvin Phillips. Marcelo Bielsa. Leeds Rhinos. Kergate Market. The pies at Ellen Road. Heading Lee. Me. <laughs> That's what makes the city, the people in it. If you're willing to go out and do something and dare to dream, they follow behind you. Grew up on the east side of Leeds, the LS9 area, about three miles away from the city centre. So this is where I was born. My dad always remembers a memory of myself. Just over one year old, stood at the edge of this, of this garden here, just picking up stones and bricks and whatever I could find and launching them at cars. Sean O'Hagan, Ed Sainer, uh, Josh Warrington, and allegedly his father. He was tiny as a kid, he was a little bit frail, a little bit fragile. Thought I'll get him active, get him doing something, just because it's kind of good for you. Although he won't think that now, looking at me, but... We um, took him along, got him used to the gym environment, and he, he just took to it straight away. It's in bags, loved it, wanted to go again. But only were only little and tiny, and looked a bit fragile. He had a lot of fire in him, you know. I can still remember it like it was yesterday. Walking in, smell of the bags, you know, there's the sound of punches being thrown. Hey, it's up back of my neck, stood up. And I uh, thought, I want to have a go. I want to have a go. When I was a kid, I used to go pick up the boxing news and I'd scroll through it. And I'd see a lot of Northern clubs there. Actually, Sheffield there, Manchester. I mentioned Liverpool there. But never seen Leeds. I'd always said, I'd love to put Leeds on map. If we could go back to the, the good old days of LS9 and that one, in the teens and that, yeah, <laughs> that yeah, I, won't, I won't mind, I won't mind a bit of that. If you're LS9, you're either going to come out of it a crackhead or a yeah. champion fighter, yeah, exactly, that's, where yeah. all, that's where all hard <laughs> kids are from. That's where character were built, wasn't yeah, it? Character were built. Hundred percent, like uh, that was the first time I, I met about you because obviously you went around with my granddad and yeah. stuff like that. My granddad said to me, he said, "This kid's going to be world champion. You need to watch out for him." And that won't be that now. About 14 years, 15 years ago, yeah, something like that. Yeah. They were right, wasn't it? Yeah, your granddad had, had, he was full of wisdom, full of advice, obviously experience. He'd, he'd lived, hadn't he? He'd, he'd, yeah, lived, he'd lived he the life so of a men. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> Have you ever needed any advice? You go yeah. see Albert. Someone sent me the other day, said he, uh, he lost his driving license and he, he got an horse and rode it to pub instead of having a car. <laughs> so what did he do with it? He went just tied it up outside and got his pint and then rode it back home. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, that's like yeah. the type of stories you get of him, but there's the mental side and all, yeah. the, all the wisdom that he had brought with it as well. Yeah. What age did you start? Well, I started when I was 13 and I, I, lied. I went pro when I was 14 because we lied and said I was 16 because in Thai boxing you can't go pro until you're 16. And um, I just went, I, I want, I can't. I've had this fight with all pads on yeah. and I had got and body shield and shin pads and all that and I had this one fight and I got out of ring and I went, I'm not doing that again to my coach, Richard. I said, I'm not doing it again, mate. I said, right, I'm not putting them pads on again. He went, you've got to be 16 until you fight pro. I went, lie. <laughs> I said, lie. I said, tell them, tell them I'm 16. So we did that, and this promoter he went, oh, I've got another 16-year-old here. We'll match them together, and then that can be like his first pro fight, his first pro, pro fight. So I turned up to weigh-in, our Andy took me to weigh-in. Both weighed in, same way. I looked at him, I thought, I'm 14, I thought, I'm looking at him, I thought, he don't look 16. I watched him leave, and he got in his Golf GTI and drove <laughs> off, mate. I like, what the fuck's going on here? What was happening? It turned out afterwards he was 19, but I knocked him out in first round. <laughs> <laughs> When I were at school, I sat in a lesson and I wouldn't be thinking about what's going on in a lesson, I was thinking about fighting. It's, it's, it's a selfish mentality, but it's what's got you to the top, isn't it? Yeah, of course, mate. It's got yeah. you to the top. It's called, we, we share that like, together, like two LS9 boys who have done all right for themselves. It's, it's a decent story, really, mate. It gives you lessons in life growing up in Leeds. I mean, everywhere you go, these characters. In Leeds, you've got little areas. And each little area will have its own dialects. We've got an area called Gipton where in conversation you'd be saying that I was talking to a mush the other day. Mush means I'm talking to a man the other day. You know what I mean? Hey up means hello. 
Bob into, I'm nipping into, bobbing into the pub. Cal, having a chat. Mongey's when you're moody, basically, and Mingy's when you're being tight and not spending your money. But then with all that together, it's like, hey up, just bobbing into the pub for a Cal. Put your hand in your pocket, stop being so mingy, because then I'll start getting mongy. Dingy, dingy means idiot, basically. Knack means hitting someone or having a fight, like I'll knack you. And then lug oil means your ear, so you might need your lug oil clearing out. Clipping out lug oil, that's what my grandma used to say. If you don't shut up, I'll get a clipping out lug oil, I'll knack you. <laughs> now, I do like talking about food. That's my one, uh, one passion, is that you can't tell, obviously. You know, I was looking at my eyes at my Asda bag there. I think the best place to eat in Leeds would be my fucking kitchen, to be honest with you. So to my knowledge, the Yorkshire pudding was born out of a total accident two to three hundred years ago, obviously here in God's own country, Yorkshire, um, when the roast was in the oven, in a hot oven, um, that causes the fat to drip out of the meat. And then these cooks, chefs, had an idea to use some flour, some eggs and some milk, whip up a little batter and poured it into that red hot dripping. Yeah, well, listen, Matt's all right, but he's one of them chefs in here what they're all taught from colleges and all that. They're having them all light and fluffy and crispy and golden brown and all that. It's all bollocks, that. Listen, my grandma showed me how to make them. Cup of eggs, cup of milk, white pepper, salt, a cup of flour. So it's equal amounts of everything, plus half as much flour again. Beaten up till it's bubbly, thick, Stand in the fridge for half an hour, it's got to come down temperature. Can only be made with lard. Smoking hot in your oven. Take it out, get your batter in. About a quarter inch thick in bottom of the tin. Shove it back in and don't mess about with it. Leave it 15 minutes. That's your perfect yosh pudding. Here. Yeah. So we're. So when you're out, you're out, you? So when we're here. I have my son to go Tied on, on my leg. Now it's an anthem of Leeds United first and foremost, but then Leeds Rhinos are taken on as well. I have that because that's what it's like having the support from the city. When I'm in the boxing ring, it's not just me. The support that I get, it's as though everyone else is in the ring with me. Obviously, being a proud Leeds lad, you now I want to play for Leeds United. I wanted to be alongside Mark Viduka and Alan Smith, David Batty, Lucas Radibi. Don Matty or wanted to be like them. The advantage Leeds have is they're a one-team city. Everyone in Leeds supports Leeds. Everyone in Leeds wears the Leeds shirts. That's just the way it is. Eddie Gray, the, the Leeds legend, had a little chat with me about the, you know, the history and talked to me about Leeds and about what it means to play for Leeds United. And that, that was really important to have that conversation. It's a great club to play for. Work hard for them, um, do the right thing, and they, they'll look after you as a, as, a, as a player. And they did. And the fans are great, them Champions League games, especially Ellen Road, the atmosphere was electric. And obviously Josh can say that from his boxing point of view, is the support he's had more than anyone has been incredible. I mean, I've been to, the, been to the boxing with Josh and you've never seen an atmosphere like it. It's like being at Ellen Road. And I think um, Josh was trying to recreate that in the boxing. And I think he'd he, he done it very well. When I was started going along to Ellen Road and watching Leeds United, like say, oh, Giants, and I was, I was just a kid, 10, 11, playing absolute monsters of Europe. Big football teams coming to Ellen Road, always packed out. All of a sudden, it's not me. I remember when Leeds got relegated, listening to it on radio, and I'm turning around to my old fella saying, what happens now, Dad? I mean, I don't you worry about it, they'll be back, they'll be straight back up. It's happened before, they'll be back. No one had anticipated it'd be so long before they got back to the top. I think for years, when, when Leeds were relegated from the Premier League and there, there was sort of financial issues there and they went down to, to League One, I think the city sort of felt that. You look at the city of Leeds and they want to be proud of the football team and vice versa. And I think in recent years, you know, the latest owner, I think that he's done that. The city always embraced the football club, but the football club hasn't always in the last sort of 20 years embraced the, the city and the people of the city. And I think they're doing that now and I think that is why it's working so well. And, Everybody in Leeds are, are proud of the city and proud of the, uh, the club that belongs to the city. You know, Leeds has always historically been a club that's been hated, hated by, you know, the written media and the visual media. They've always had an image of being dire, being violent, being unwanted, being the damned United. That has, has stuck with them throughout time.
until uh, people started to notice what Marcelo Bielsa uh, had done to the club. He's brought in this brand of football that none of us in, in my generation um, ha have seen. It's not a, a win at all costs like we've been associated with before. It's an entertain at all costs. I think the only sort of downside for me is that you now get people in the press and in the media who are now love Leeds and they come to you and they say, um, you know, Leeds is my second team. I love watching Leeds. Well, sort of my response to that is sort of twofold is firstly, nobody has a second team. And secondly, you can fuck off. So among the many uh, different aspects of the rivalry between uh, Yorkshire and Lancashire, there's a great rivalry between the two big football teams of the two areas, which is Leeds United here in Yorkshire and also Manchester United over in uh, Lancashire. To me, the history of that stems from the late 60s and, and 70s with, uh, on, the, on the football pitch with uh, Busby and, and Revy. They were still the media darlings that they were rebuilding. They had George Best at the forefront, who, who the papers love to love. Find Alan Garling, Bobby Charlton, United moving forward again. Manchester there, George Best has a lot of room for work. Gibbons on his right. Best again! A glorious goal by Best! Manchester United were looked at as being progressive and, and entertaining. Leeds never had that attention. Leeds were looked at as cynical, dirty, a bad brand of football. One of the great emblems of, of Yorkshire, and therefore by extension of Leeds, is, is the White Rose. The White Rose is a medieval emblem that was adopted by one of the great uh, royal houses of the, the British uh, dynasty, uh, which was the House of York. Their great rivals were the House of Lancaster, which is just across the Pennines, the hills in the middle of, um, of England, and they adopted a red rose. In the 19th century, Sir Walter Scott, the famous Scottish romantic writer, described the great series of battles that happened in the 1400s between those two rival royal families. He called it the War of the Roses. So since then, in popular kind of culture, you talk about the White Rose of Yorkshire being opposed to the Red Rose of uh, Lancashire. If you ask anybody about what sports do you associate with Leeds, they would definitely say football or, or soccer, but that was something that was uh, started in from about the early 1900s. Much longer history in, in Leeds is cricket. Cricket is formed into county teams in, in England, and Yorkshire, the home of Leeds, is the most successful county ever, with 32 championships. One of the homes of England cricket is Headingley, which is an area of Leeds where there's a large sporting complex which was opened in um, 1890. But Headingley is also the home of the Leeds rugby team. Everybody played rugby union, even us northerners. And then it, it come to pass that the working class northerners who used to work down in mining pits couldn't afford to not work on a weekend and play rugby, so they made it professional and made sure that they were subsidised by paying them. Uh, and the Northern, well, the, the rugby union fraternity said, well, you can't do that, it's an amateur game, so we had to break away and form rugby league, or Northern Union it was called then. And there was a real strong class divide in that the working class Northerners ended up playing predominantly rugby league, and rugby union synonymous with uh, middle class people if you imagine pool and snooker, one of them being quite fun and fast-paced, the other one being quite laborious uh, and boring, essentially, that's the difference for me between union and league. But I would be biased because I love league. There was a, a report, actually, by Manchester Met University called the Dividend Report that looked at some of the sports that allowed those working-class kids to, to play at places like Wembley and Old Trafford, and they found that boxing and rugby league were the two sports. The thing that's really attractive about Josh Warrington and the way that he applies himself to his trade is how committed he is to it and how prepared he is. I don't think I've ever seen a sports person who prepares and is as dedicated to their industry as what Josh Warrington is. And I think that manifests itself into his performances. And I think everything about him sums up what, it, what a Leeds individual is all about, which is being very industrious, conscientious and ultimately hardworking and tough. Just talking about characteristics of people from Leeds being industrious, ruthless, yeah. out on pitch, out on ring. Yeah. But actually, don't boast about it. Just get on with it and this let the action speak through the words. I think uh, 
well, you just said it there, action speaks louder than words, and um, I think that's what a lot of us do in con the contact sports, in the sport. We do enough of it in the gym, in the training ground, all that, out on the pitch, under the lights. There was a Winston Churchill quote there that I always held dear, and it's success is never final. Defeat is never fatal, it's having the courage to continue that counts. Yeah. And that for me is what life's all about. We get out of bed every single day trying to be the best version of ourselves based on what happened yesterday. And by yesterday, I don't mean the day before, I mean every single day since the day you were born. It's funny because a lot of, when you look at some sports, especially football, there's players that are signed from all over the world, um, big sporting nations, but it's, when you look at the history of the, the Leeds Rhinos or Leeds RL, the Loiners, yeah. I reckon some of the best teams have had a, a nucleus of players that were either born or lived within 15 miles of, of Leeds. Yeah. Hey, we're going through a decent era. Nicola Adams, yeah. great history, double Olympian. The Brownlee brothers, absolutely fantastic with triathlons. Gymnastics, now Wilson, setting up massive centres for, for young kids to go to. What was fascinating to me over lockdown was how these murals started going up on yeah. walls of yeah. Leeds, iconic yeah. buildings, yeah. iconic Leeds people. Yeah. And like, I get hairs on my neck, I'm getting hairs on my neck now talking about <laughs> driving under the underpass yeah. there yeah. and seeing yourself. The future of Leeds sport is bright because we've all got our own models and it, it paves onto the next generation. You, you can look at someone and say, oh, I could be like him. Joshua from a council estate, not the most talented, but for hard work, you know, perseverance, dedication, sacrifice. He, he won the ultimate ball, but he become a world champion. You know, Nicola Adams is flying the flag for, for women's boxing. And that has just spilled onto the gyms now. You know, the trainers will tell the fighters that they can be just like us. You look at local clubs and you see kids in there, they want it so bad. But they've got somebody now to aspire to, haven't they? My name's Callum Fallis, and I'm the next Josh Warrington. There's all kinds of opportunities within Leeds, not just rugby league clubs, but football clubs, gymnastics, judo, whatever it is. They are community hubs, and it's just the, the sport that becomes incidental. It's a means in which to have fun. But at the end of the day, it's about the relationships that are built. I've still got lifelong relationships there now. One thing I'll say about the Leeds people and the fans, the passion's crazy, and they want the best for each other. We're all on the same page on trying to grow the city, and I think Leeds are only at the start. When I think of Josh Warrington, I just think of fighter. Fighter in every sense. Determination. This kid wants to win every time he goes out there. He sums us up incredibly well. Like, don't mess with him. Naki, one of us. Champion. He's a boxer from Leeds.